Hi, Hi from Alice Stitcher Fingers here. Um, as promised, I'm going to do you the uh, tutorial for the project bag. Now, this is the one I made as a prototype. I've recently changed it so that it, it hasn't got that on. So the one that you've got has got instructions, not for that. But this is just to show you what I'm making. Um, it's got the um, pockets for um, anything you want for projects, but you've also got this elastic for putting threads and things in. I'll show you it this way. You've got zip pockets for putting your projects in so it's going to keep them all together nice and clean. I've recently been on a retreat um, and it worked absolutely perfectly for the retreat. So you've got a pocket on one side and if you want to, a zip pocket on the other side. Um, it's You can personalise it as to what you want to do. So it's all bound around the edges. It's got a double zip going around the outside edge so it zips up and you've got a carry handle for carrying so you can get absolutely loads in this so how did we make it first of all i'm going to show you some of the components that i've done as prep so it's not too long for you but these are obviously easy enough to do um, yourself so i've got my zips with the adjusters uh, sorry the sliders on now you can see it's got a rounded part on there what you're going to do is start at one end with the rounded part going on first and that goes in to the middle and then on the other side put the rounded part on first so that they're going to meet in the center and you're going to put zips on four pieces of 16 inch of the thinner zip that's for your zip pockets so that's the zips we've got the gussets and the in, uh, calico for the inside of that I've fused those already so they're ready to go we've got the handles which I've done because basically it's just a case of stitch down both sides turn them through and top stitch I've not top stitched because this is just to show you how it all goes together I've interfaced the base that is for sewing your pockets onto uh, the other gusset side and what I've done just to show you that you don't have to use my ruler system or free motion this is basically just stitched in a zigzag uh, sorry a cross hatch so if you're not comfortable with doing um, fancy stitching you don't have to this is basically just a cross hatch and in there we've got the wadding the main and the um, calico for the lining so I've done all that ready to start going so first of all I'm going to show you how to do the pockets so here is one I've done. I'm going to do the other half of this to show you how to do the two pockets and the zip compartment. So where did I put my other zip? Here it is. So I've already inserted my slider onto the zip and I'm going to take the uh, glass, glitter glass piece and I've cut that to size. Face it face your zip with the slider down onto the glass it's not glass but you know if that's what it's called and I'm just keeping the top edges um, level and basically I'm just stitching now I'm on a industrial machine but you will probably be on your own domestic sewing machine so you might have your zipper foot on I'm doing it just for speed it's exactly the same so I'm not saying you need to have an industrial machine. What I'm saying is I'm doing it to make it quicker. Right, so I'm folding down the um, PVC there and I'm just going to top stitch. So as I go, I'm going to fold the seam underneath down and just press it with my finger and top stitch. So for all you out there who say you can't do zips, tell me that this looks difficult. Because that's as easy as it is. So that is the zip attached on there. I'll just get rid of these threads. So now I've got one attached on there. All I did was lay the calico down. Don't worry that this is going to be bigger. I've done that so it's easier for you to line it up. We're going to now stitch on top of those stitches there. So just place that on top with your zipper facing up. 
and stitch across the top. So you're going through all the layers together. Hold it straight. Just make sure you don't go over that zip. We don't want any broken needles. If you have to on your machines, you can actually stop with the needle down, pull that zipper past so that you're not um, risking touching it. Right, so that's that done. So now what we're going to do is make sure it's all nice and flat and I'm going to stitch across the bottom to hold all that in place. I can see through the stitches that I did before. You'll notice I keep on smoothing it down. I'm not pulling on it, I'm just smoothing it as I go. Get rid of those threads. And then take it out. Now we've got that excess there. I'm going to just trim quite close because we are going to bind this and I don't want this to get in the way. But this is the easiest way of doing it i've found so now i'm just gonna stitch down the sides and then it's ready for binding down the opposite side and then you can stitch uh, trim sorry to um about an eighth of an inch from the stitching because we want to cover this, that stitching up with the binding so I'm going to quickly just trim that I'm going to just trim two edges because I want to show you how it all goes together rather than showing you things that are repeated because you can always rewind so I think the bottom's all right there so I've got two edges there so I can show you a corner there right I'll quickly get on with that and then you've shown you everything so you're getting a thick binding, this one, and a thin binding. We're going to use the thin one at this point. Oops. You may find it easier to press the binding. Um, I haven't got that prepped, so I'm just going to do mine as it is. If you prep it beforehand, it may be easier for you to do it. What I'm going to do, fold over just a little bit of a hem at the start and put that on one side of the um, piece there and bring the top over. You can use clips if you have them and if you find it easier to go around the whole thing first do that. I don't because I'm used to working in a factory where we didn't use pins and clips so I'm going to do it as I go but do what's easier for you. So what I'm going to do is just move that down, start on that piece there and start to stitch. I'm going to get rid of that now. Now I always use a stiletto, whether it be a plastic one or a metal one. You, this is an invaluable tool when you're doing something like binding. We've got the bottom underneath, fold the top over and then stitch. And it'll hold all that in place while you're stitching. So I'm going to stitch now all the way to the top, laying it on the back, push it onto the um, fabric and bring the binding over to cover it all up and make it look nice and neat. Now take your time with this, I know I'm doing it quickly but it's only for speed to get it done for you uh, to see how it's done going to stitch right up to that top edge and come off here where it reaches the zip end. So I'm going to stitch right up to that point and then back tack and take that out. Snip my threads and what I'm going to do is turn it around now you can see I've got my end here, I'm going to squash it flat against that zip, look at the back and you can see it forms like a, a, a diamond shape. Bring one end down on the other end over and it naturally mitres itself. 
so then you've done your corner and you're just going to carry on and you're going to do that the whole way through so i'm not going to carry on because i've obviously shown you everything that you will come across on doing the binding of that so I'll just snip that off so that's how you would do your pocket now another one is where there's got the elastic so now this was intended for um for doing things like your threads but if you want to put tools in you could measure it for whatever size you want and literally it's just a case of seeing how high you want it because if you're doing scissors you may want it lower lower down so you decide on that and what i'm going to do is just stitch and back stitch and stitch again just to give it strength on that edge now decide how wide i want it if i'm going to do it for um threads and these are the small gutterman threads then i only need to have a small space so just measure what you need and if you're doing it for threads stitch about an inch and a quarter something like that inch and a half and then snip your threads and then your threads will go on there and that's how you how you do that so you'll do that all the way across for whatever you're wanting to store in yours and then you would do the top the same with the zips so you can have it pockets on either side you can have the elastic on either side it's entirely up to yourself right so we've done the um pocket there now what we're going to do is show you how we do the um base so we're going to stitch around this and turn it through but we're not going to stitch the ends because that's going to get caught in with the um, binding so I'm just going to stitch all the way across both sides Turn it through and you will give it a press. I'm not going to do that because of time and moving about. Can I just say it's absolutely red hot up here. Spring's coming I think. The things I do for you Lotte working in the heat right so I'm just going to finger press this now oops I must have missed a bit there not to worry I'm going to top stitch just to hold it It's not going to get used this one so there's no no worry about it and down the other side yeah because you'd also change the thread color there we go so that's giving me the base so now what you would decide is if you're wanting to use the part of your bag for storing a lot of finished blocks you may want to use maybe that much of the base for storing your blocks if that's the case stitch when you've got your binding on straight down the binding here and do maybe two or three and leave all the rest of it so that in the bottom of the bag you've got lots of space if you're not going to use it for that and you're just going to put loads of inserts in just space them out maybe one um, an inch uh, sorry a centimeter from the side one a centimeter from that and so on but that's something that you're going to decide yourself right so what we need to do now is I've marked halfway on here 
and this is the base of the bag so that piece there is going to go in here when we've stitched all the um, inserts on so I'm just going to pin that in there so just remember you would have all your inserts on there right so we're going to get the gusset together now I've got my zip ready and I've got my calico and one side here so we're going to put the zip face down against the edge of the calico uh, sorry the fabric there bring the calico and if you prefer to do this in um, two goes do it that way for speed I'm going to sew them all together if you're doing it in two goes you would omit the calico sew all down there then that will hold that in place bring the calico in for speed I'm going to do it all in one go so what I'm going to do is encasing that zip in there I'm going to stitch all those edges together Don't worry if you haven't got the confidence to do it this way, do it in two parts. There is no problem whatsoever with that. Right now, what we're going to do is open that up. You're probably better off pressing, but Again, I'm not going to. So what I'm going to do is just fold, bring the zip up, bring those two back and hold them back there. You can pin, clip, whatever you want to do. I'm going to put it under and top stitch to hold all that in place. So as I'm going, I'm just making sure I can feel it when it's level there. Stitch down all the way. And then the easiest thing to do is to trim all those edges level. going to do exactly the same on the other side to put the other side of the gusset on so this is going to give it the width so I'll take the other one place that level with the top there get the calico place that underneath so that you can see the zip is enclosed inside there and we're going to stitch all the way down this top edge keeping the fabric all level And the next thing to do is to put the um, handles on. It's always easier to do it at this point. Molly's decided to have a roll around the floor. Like a big Jessie that she is. had enough of that now. Oh, she's 
come to have a look at what we're doing. Right, so I'm just going to fold all this back and do exactly the same as we did on the other side by top stitching to hold all that down. It's beginning to look now like a gusset. You can't make a video without Molly coming to have a, have a say on matters. Now this top stitching is going to show, so take your time with it. Mine's a little bit wobbly. I mean, this is a project. Oh, my bobbins run out. Why didn't you tell me? Don't you just love it when that happens? There we go. Put a new bobbin in. And we'll decide to start again where we left off. Go again. Deja vu. Quickly catch up. There we go. Back to where we were before. So I'm going to fold this in half to find out the centre. Actually, I'm just going to trim off that to make it all level. Fold it in half to find the centre. I'm going to put a clip at that point. And we're going to get one of the straps so it's going to go probably about three inches from the centre there, and I'm just I'm just guessing. Maybe a bit closer, yeah. So about there, and the other side, about the same gap from there. Take that off, and then get the other strap and do exactly the same. Now, once you've got these in, you can actually see where the others should go. And it just makes it that bit easier. Make sure they're not twisted. There we go. And I'm just going to stitch them to keep them in place. This is what's going to take all the weight of all your projects, so I'll give it a couple of times over. Just for added strength. Same on the opposite side. I hope these tutorials help you even though they're not full tutorials. It's basically just a guide as to how to do the patterns. So there we've got our handles, and I know it looks a bit strange with the. Um, actually, I should have done them that way around, shouldn't I? Not to worry. Right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put the gusset into the bag. So we've got that base there. You would stitch down there. In fact, I'll quickly do that. This is going to give it a nice flat bottom for standing up. Down the other side. There we go. 
So now what we're going to do is place the gusset. Actually, it goes that way. Um, against that edge, and I think it's probably easier to clip because it's quite thick. So get some clips. Clip there. And there. And then the other one is going to go at this side centrally there. and there and then all this is going to go all the way around so what you're going to do is in fact I'll, I'll start doing it then you can see so I'm going to start about a centimeter away from the corner there going through all layers take the clip off when you get to it don't worry if it's not straight because you're going to trim it off to be able to put your binding on you can stitch over these zips they are a nylon zip stitch to about a centimeter away from the edge there with your needle down bring this gusset around make sure it's all nice and level until the sides are level and carry on stitching and that gives you a lovely neat corner just going to make sure that this looks like it's going to be the right size which it should be but if it isn't now is the time to trim so uh, no, I think it's going to be okay so just all your edges together sorry I'll try and squash that down a bit so you can see Sorry about this, fabric's trying to get in the way. Stop about a centimetre from the corner, needle down, bring the fabric around, get the side, bring it so it's level again with that side and carry on stitching. Stitch over the handles. I always stop with your needle down. Again, stop about a centimetre away from the edge with your needle down, turn it around, pull it all nice and flat and carry on stitching. Now it is a little bit big so maybe I should have trimmed it but I'm only going to show you one side anyway um, so I'll just carry on sewing until I get to the bottom. the other side is going to be exactly the same so again you're going to sew down till you get about a centimeter away from the edge here just easing that in and then you would pivot and go across the base so a centimeter away take the clip out bring that around stitch all the way across the bottom and go around the other side so you're doing it all in one go And bring that around you can see now it's taking shape as the bag I'll stitch up to the top and then uh, I'll show you the binding because that's the last part of the bag so all the way around you're doing exactly the same up to the top corner stop with your needle down bring your fabric straight round bring the sides together and stitch across. Right, so I'm just going to go across these. I keep saying that, don't I? I'll probably end up finishing it. These straps, and then I'll show you what the bag looks like. I've never made a bag this quick. Right, so as you can see now, we've got the um, look of a bag. We've got the handles at the top, we've got the zip. What we need to do now is finish off all these raw edges so what you would do is with a nice sharp pair of scissors trim all 
all the way around so that you've got a nice neat edge and you're going to use this thicker don't start with a, a seam you can see we've got a seam there if you've got a seam just trim that off and I do like to finish these edges off with um, hand stitching it gives you a lot better finish so what I'm going to do is stitch one side on with uh, machine and then hand stitch the finish side so fold over about a centimeter or something like that just to um, start off I'm going to start here I'm going to go around the corner and then finish because obviously um, that's showing you how, everything you need to know when you finish you just come back round, go over the top and cut off the excess so you can see here we've got the line of stitching there I'm going to stitch just at the side of this fold here so I'm going to put that underneath and start stitching. Try and keep it down so you can see. Stitch all the way to the top. Now this is slightly different to the um, thinner one. Just trimming off that excess there. going to stitch to the top and we're going to stop where you can see the seam of the bottom turn your work and come off at an angle into the corner so you've got there stitching down and then come off at an angle what you need to do is bring this round Hold it with your finger and bring the binding up and then bring it straight back down. So you've got a line at the top where it's level with the seam there and this is going straight down to the edge there and you're going to stitch down. So I'll show you it again. Bring it around to the side, put it up so you've got that diagonal line there bring it back down and you're going to stitch across there Hold it when it's stitched so you can see what it looks like and that's going to give you a lovely mitered finish so just hold it all in place again the stiletto is a brilliant tool for this because you can hold it all down stop with your needle down move all the excess fabrics out of the way I'm trying to keep them out of your view but right so I've gone round that corner snip your threads off what you're going to do then is push all that binding away if you want to press it feel free to press it you're gonna trim all this down so there's none, none there so just give it a nice try not to cut your binding just the excess fabric Bring the binding over so it covers that raw stitch in there and hand stitch that. So again, you do need to trim it off because it's, there's a lot of layers of fabric and wad in there. So go around and trim all that off and then fold the binding over, clip it and you're just going to slip stitch all down there. So on the corner what you would do is bring it all to this side and you can see that lovely little mitre there bring this trim it off again almost done you can you know watch the tutorial stop it at the parts you need and blah 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 finish off so right bring this one over here put a clip and then this side here we're going to hold it down there and then bring this side over the top and slip stitch around so you've got that mitre in the corner there and that'll give you a lovely finished edge with your clip on so you're just going to go all the way around and you're going to do that on every corner and you will then have your lovely um, finished project bag for you to go off on retreats and to workshops and have lots of fun